I am the ultimate tool. What's going on guys? Now today I finally got a mod video for you. Now if you've been following me on Instagram then you know that the car's currently off the road again because it needs more work doing. But we're not modifying the car in this video. We're actually modifying a tool. Now if you've seen my last two videos then you'll know that I recently rebuilt my rear brake calipers. So mine are all shining fresh and they've got new pistons, new seals and all that good stuff. But if you've ever worked on old brake calipers before then you'll know that they can be a pain in the ass to rewind. Even if you have one of these special brake caliper rewind tools. In fact, I found it pretty much impossible without one of these things. But even with them, it can be a real struggle and you can't exactly get a lot of leverage with this handle. And as you can see, this one is pretty beaten up. So in this video, I am gonna be showing you how to modify this tool and make the ultimate brake caliper rewind tool. The first thing I need to do is get rid of this stupid handle. Okay, there we go, that's that off. Now you could just put a longer bar or something like that through here, but I've got a better idea. I wanna put something on the top of this tool, but will accept a standard socket, like that. And what I found is this. It's a standoff or a pillar, whichever you'd like to call it. And my idea is to cut this down to make a nut to fit on the top of our tool. Now, obviously this is too narrow at the minute, so we're gonna bore this out to the diameter of this and slot that on there. Now I looked into welding the pillar onto the top of our tool, but don't worry, you don't need to be able to weld to do what I'm gonna do, I found a better way. Now I've already measured the diameter of the top of this tool. Now on mine, that's 12 and a half mil. If you've got one of these, it might be slightly different, but mine's 12 and a half mil. So we're gonna bore out the center of this pillar to 12 and a half millimeters. But before I can do that, I just need to cut this threaded section off the end. And now we can start boring out this pillar. So there we go, that fits in there nicely. Okay, so now we know our hole's deep enough to accept the top of the tool. I'm just gonna make a rough measurement. And then we can cut this down and make our nut. So there we go, there's our homemade nut. I'm just gonna pop this in the vise and just give this end that we've cut a little bit of a clean up with a file. Now I just need to check that it fits on top of our tool, which it does perfectly. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out a way of stopping this nut we just made spinning on the top of our tool when we try and wind the piston back in on our brake calipers. Using the top of these threads as a guide on the bottom of our nut, I'm gonna use the hole in the center of the top of our tool to make a mark on the side of the nut and then we're gonna drill a hole right through the side of the nut. This is where accuracy is gonna be an issue because I don't have a center punch and because of the way the nut's clamped in the vise, I have to drill in at an angle. But I'm gonna try and make it as accurate as I can just by hand. Now, the drill bit I'm using is a 6.8 millimeter drill bit. And that's because that's the size drill bit you need to make a pilot hole before you tap a thread, an M8 thread to be precise. So, there we go. There's our hole drilled all the way through our nut, ready to tap an M8 thread. Okay, now I've never actually tapped a hole in a new piece of metal before. I've kind of re-tapped holes to clean up the threads and re-dyed some bolts as well, but uh, I've never actually tapped a brand new thread in anything, so this is gonna be an experience. What I'm planning to stick through the hole to hold it all together is just uh, the shaft of this M8 bolt. Originally, I was gonna try and find like a countersunk screw or something or bolt to go through it, uh, and then just countersink the outside of it, but I've thought about it, and what I'll do is I'll just cut the head off this, cut like a slot in the end so I can screw it in with a screwdriver, and that should hold enough, you know, for what I need it for. So just quickly, just to make sure I'm actually tapping the right size hole, I've got a little thread depth, or sorry, thread pitch gauge here. So if you can see that, it's 1.25, which I believe is the standard thread pitch for an M8, uh, M8 bolt. The kit I've got does have an eight by one, but uh, yeah, this one that I'm using is 
M8 by 1.25. Got a tap already set up in here, so yeah, let's uh, let's tap a hole. Just going to use a little bit of oil around the hole to lubricate it. Now I want to try and make sure this tap goes in as straight as possible, but I've also got to try and make sure it's a straight shot through to the other side, which is going to be difficult. I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to nail that, but I will try. Now, if you want to learn how to tap a hole, then this isn't the channel to be learning on. Like I said, this is the first time. I've ever done this, but I sort of understand the basic principles that you sort of, you go forwards a little bit and then backwards a little bit just to kind of clean out the uh, the swarf that you create as you tap the holes. Just going to remove it temporarily and clean that all out before we move on to trying to tap the second side. I'll just go straight through from this side so we get a straight shot, but I just want to clean this up a bit first. Okay, so I'm ready to start to, uh, trying to tap the other side. I did just go ahead and thread the M8 bolt that I've got into the first hole to see if it kind of went as a straight shot through to the other side, and I think we're way off. So I'm not sure if this second hole is actually going to tap or not. I hope it does, but I'm not sure if it will. It doesn't sound happy. It doesn't look happy. Let's hope I don't ruin the tap. Okay, there we go. That is our hole tapped. I don't know if you can see. Just see the threads in there. And fingers crossed that actually threads through. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can get that through our tool. Now, I did try briefly to just push an M8 bolt through the hole in there. It is an 8mm hole, I believe, or thereabouts, and it is a little bit too tight. That doesn't go through. So what I'm thinking now is popping this on here and then just going at it again with the tap to actually try and tap the inside of that hole in the tool because then at least we know we've got a thread all the way through. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. Okay, so I've just finished winding the tap all the way through the top of our tool to make sure that's completely tapped out. So now I'm gonna remove the tap and try and thread that bolt through it. And if the bolt threads through fine, then we're gonna cut the head off it, install it, and then the tool's done. Just to confirm our bolt goes through there, happy enough. I've just got to hope now that everything lines up once we put the nut on top. Okay, moment of truth. Well, I think it's through the tool. Will it go through into the other side of the nut? Yes, it does. Just. I mean, I want to make sure it actually goes through all the way, but pretty much, we're pretty much there. It is going to be difficult to wind that in with a, a screwdriver, I think, later, but we are pretty much there, guys. Look at that. And that is solid on there as well. All the way through. So now I just need to cut the head off this bolt. And then I'm just gonna cut a straight slot in the top of it. There we go. Hoping that'll just be enough to use a screwdriver to screw that in. And I'm just gonna go around with a file just to clean up the edges as well. go you can just see that slot in the top of there so now moment of truth let's see if it all goes together okay it starts winding in by hand that's good it did tighten up quite quickly though so let's get the screwdriver in yeah okay i'm really struggling there now sorry i think that was a bit blurry then but uh 
just to show you. We've got it three quarters of the way in, I'd say. I'm just going to have a look, see if I've got a socket with a uh, flat blade screwdriver bit in it, uh, just because it's really hard to wind in with just a screwdriver. Okay, there we go. It is in and it is just about flush and it's just about right on the other side too. So there we go. I've done it and like it is it is solid. There's no way that's moving. I'm gassed with that. That's so good, right? Now comes the real test. Does the 22mm socket fit? Let's see. No. <laughs> It's starting to take material off the, off the nut now, so it must be there. Yes! There we go! It's on! So there we go, we have a 22mm hex bit on the end of our rewind tool. That's going to make it so much easier to wind in stiff pistons now, because you can just use whatever length bar you want with a 22mm socket on it. So, you know, half inch ratchet or breaker bar or anything like that is going to take a 22mm socket that you can wind that in with. I'm so happy with that, that is class. Now, I really wanna get outside and show you this thing in action, but it has gone dark now, so I'm not gonna be able to show you that tonight, but if I can get a chance to get outside and show you this thing tomorrow before this video goes live, then I will do that and I will show you this thing in action, but I am absolutely stoked about that, that's so good, and it's gonna make things so much easier when I come to rewind some stiff pistons in the future. So yeah, hopefully catch up with you tomorrow and I'll show you this thing in action. Now this car has just had new pads on the back when I rebuilt the calipers, but nevertheless, I popped the pads out, popped the disc out, and I just wanna show you this tool actually working. One thing I have just noticed as well when putting the bracket on is that you need to make sure that the nut you're putting on the top clears the bracket. I got lucky and mine does. Now you'll probably notice on mine that my bracket's got these two little notches cut out. They're not normally there, but I used a grinder to cut those out just so this fits in there nicely. You can choose whether or not you wanna do something like that or yours might just fit without them. So yeah, that's the tool nicely in place. As you can see, there's not an awful lot of that piston to push back in, but nevertheless, we're gonna give it a little go. So I've got my 22 mil socket on my ratchet, slot that on there, and we can just wind that back in. Nice and easy. There we go, job done. Okay guys, there we go, that's that done. I am so happy with that. That is so much better, it's gonna make things so much easier now when trying to rewind brake pistons. And although this is like a rewind tool, you could use this on the front brakes as well that just sort of press in and out and don't actually need to be wound back in. If you just use the flat plate on there, you could push those back in as well. So now I think this really is the ultimate brake caliper rewind tool. And it was so easy to do, it didn't really cost anything. I mean, I managed to get some of these parts from work, but I mean, you could pick stuff up like this for next to nothing. So it's a really cheap mod you can do to these tools to really make them so much more effective. Now I need to crack on and put these brakes back together and I also need to carry on working on the reason that this car is actually in the air in the first place this time. But that's something you're gonna see very soon. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you do, otherwise you might miss that. But for this one, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.